You are watching Sad Pie Enterprises. Hello, everybody. We are your hosts, Tehoon King, John Mason, Kevin Delgado, and Ray Chang. And welcome back to Our Ways of Life by Sad Pie Enterprises. Last episode, me, Ray, John, and Kevin have probed into the unique history of Japanese immigrants, along with the different significant individuals who had important contributions to the United States as a country. In this second episode on Japanese Americans, we are going to speak about the different cultural holidays, foods, and traditions of Japanese or Nisei communities to gain insight into the unique heritage the Japanese American groups here in the States have to share with us today. So, anyways, looking into the Japanese American communities and their culture, when it comes to their culture, the Japanese are very festive, shown through their countless celebrations and festivals that they have throughout the year, which the Japanese often refer to as Matsuri. And it is even said that you can always find the festival going on somewhere in Japan and even sometimes in the States. So as we clearly can tell from this alone, the Japanese have put a huge emphasis on their festivals as it kind of allows them to enjoy the passage of time with family or friends in a enjoyable and exciting manner. So I wanted to ask the question, what are some of the most significant cultural and traditional holidays that we observe with the Japanese? How do these specific holidays separate the Japanese cultural and traditional holidays with the rest of the Asian holidays? What is so special about these specific holidays and celebrations? Mr. John, uh, I would like to ask you for your input, if you are comfortable with it. Okay, well, as you mentioned, there are countless holidays that the Japanese people celebrate, and among the most widely celebrated would be... uh... Uh, the most significant of these, not only in Japanese culture, but also many other cultures, is the New Year, which the Japanese refer to as Shogatsu. We have already discussed the New Year being a huge festival for both Chinese and Koreans alike. And it is, well, certainly no different for the Japanese. And the interesting part looking at how the New Year is celebrated across these different Asian communities is the unique significance it holds for each respective community and the unique ways to celebrate it. To briefly explain the widely celebrated holiday, each New Year represents to the Japanese people as providing a completely new start, start to the separate year that has just passed. And in order to celebrate this forgetting of the past year, Japanese people will celebrate what are called Bonenkai parties or year forgetting parties, as they can forget about whatever worries or troubles the past year may have brought about and instead focus on the prosperity that lies within their future. Along with this, Japanese homes would be decorated all around with natural aesthetics like pine, bamboo, and plum trees that kind of uh, symbolize the welcoming of the new year. And it's customary for people to actually start the year off by viewing the first sunrise with family and friends, which has a special name called Hatsu Hinode that can be viewed from anywhere. People would even hike up to f- famous mountains like Mount Taka or Mount Mitsutog or go to special observatories like the Tokyo Sky Tree and Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building to see the Hatsu Hino. There are a plethora more of traditions that will make the Japanese way of celebrating New Year so unique like the Hatsu Mode, a special term for one's first visit to a shrine or temple that are filled with festive climate with food and stands, the Joya no Ken ritual, where temples would ring a huge bell 108 times to purify the minds and souls of the people. The Nengan Nengajo tradition where people would exchange New Year cards to basically everybody that they know, including classmates, co-workers, friends, family, and even business partners, which not only serve as a New Year's greeting, but can also be used to take part in a special lottery using the numbers that are printed on each of the cards. That is great input, Mr. John, and thank you so much. That's a lot to learn in such a short time. Whew. <clears throat> Anyways, The Japanese way of celebrating the New Year sounds pretty unique and different from how we've seen the Chinese and Koreans celebrate it. And what I find really interesting and beautiful about the Japanese culture is their close relations with nature, which is very well reflected in how they celebrate the New Year. 
specifically in their traditions of looking at the Hasui Noroi to start off every new year. It is always so captivating to see how different cultures celebrate the new year and how these different interpretations that each culture has within inside of it. But despite, <clears throat> sorry, but besides this widely celebrated new year or Shogatsu, uh, what are some of these other countless holidays you've mentioned and what do they look like? Uh, Mr. Ray, I would like to ask for your input on this question. Yeah, so besides Shogatsu, there are many more festivals that the Japanese would celebrate. And one particularly interesting one is called the Dolls Festival or Ina Matsuri, where families with girls would wish their daughters, daughters a successful and happy life, especially for those who are of the age 10 or younger. And a huge part of this festival, as one can probably tell, is the traditional Japanese dolls. More specifically, uh, they are called Hina dolls, which families would display at their homes as they are believed to ward off any evil or misery. And, alongside representing a fortune for the good health and happy marriage of all the girls in their future. And this festival was actually held to serve as a counterpart for another traditional festival that, that's called Children's Day, which is celebrated on May 5th and which originally was only for boys, though during that festival, boys and girls are now equally celebrated like today. And many of the other festivals that the Japanese celebrate are special to their culture, more specifically their history and natural scenery, including festivals like the National Foundation Day, which is meant to celebrate the day of the, the day the first ever Japanese emperor was crowned, and Greenery Day uh, due, to the Jap due to a Japanese emperor's love for plants and nature, and that uh, emperor was uh, the emperor's name being Showa and the mountain day and there's also the mountain day to celebrate japan's mountains and there's also the ocean day to celebrate japan's ocean and the return of the emperor meiji from a boat trip in 1876. there are also uh, globally celebrated festivals that the japanese would also celebrate as well like thanksgiving christmas and valentine's day though valentine's day is not a national holiday in japan and interestingly enough the Japanese also have another holiday, again, not again, not national, called the White Day, which is the opposite of Valentine's Day, in that men would give cakes and chocolates to women, though it is vice versa for Valentine's Day. Wow, the White Day and also all of these other um, celebrations, such as National Foundations Day, that this is very interesting to see. Thank you so much for your input, Mr. Ray, and... These festivals special to the Japanese all sound really interesting. And once again, you can really see that connection between the Japanese and nature with the Greenery Day, Mountain and Ocean Day festivals. But it is also interesting to see how so many Japanese families cherish, <clears throat> cherish their children, boys and girls equally to the point that they would have specific festivals dedicated to them. So, which we don't really have here in America though we do celebrate Father's and Mother's Day. So my input on this, actually, in Korea, we do have actually a day called Orininar, which is a <clears throat> certain day that of which, that of which, in which we celebrate our children as specifically grant a lot of our children's wishes, such as taking them to local or even national theme parks such as Lotte World or giving them special gifts, toys, and etc. Anyways, I diverted too much. I mean, I diverted too much off the topic. Though this is another interesting um, input from another Asian culture, that of which we have also talked about. Moving on from Japanese festivals, during these festivals and certainly on a daily basis, cuisine also plays a significant role in shaping Japanese life. And it is, I think, another kind of reflection of traditional Japanese beliefs and cultures along with the festivals. So I wanted to ask you another question. What are some of the most prominent or famous delicacies and national dish 
<clears throat> sorry, national dishes that the Japanese culture and community has brought over with them from Japan and into the United States. What exactly would we define as traditional or conventional Japanese food? Mr. Kevin Delgado, I know you have done some prior research about this. Could you please tell us some? Yeah, so traditional Japanese cuisine, uh, which is often referred to as wasoku, consists of a limitless variety of different regional and seasonal foods, and its origins um, dates back to several thousands of years ago during the prehistoric uh, Jomon period, where the cultivation of plants, rice, and the consumption of seafood uh, were all large characteristics of the daily life um, in that period. Uh, throughout uh, Japan's progression from this period to future periods like the Yayoi and Kofun, uh, rice became increasingly uh, prominent in the Japanese diet, which also came to be significantly influenced by the Chinese, causing them to adopt new cooking techniques and ingredients like other kinds of fish, meat, and vegetables. Um, a huge component that it defines wasoku as we see it today is a traditional meal with multiple courses that is called kaiseki, which serves as a brilliant, brilliant and unique dining experience that allows the, ch the chef to demonstrate their creativity and culinary skills. In preparing kaiseki, there are three main principles that chefs would follow so that their dishes may be as exquisite and refined as possible, um, including uh, seasonality, aesthetics, and balance. Seasonality refers to the recurring connection that the Japanese have with nature that we have already seen with their festivals. And Wasoku pays homage to nature by using seasonal ingredients that are a perfect resemblance of each of the four seasons of the year and reflecting the freshest produce and ingredients that each uh, particular season has to offer. Uh, for example, ingredients like bamboo shoots and cherry blossoms would be used in the spring, eel and summer vegetables during the summer, mushrooms and chestnuts in times of autumn, and heartwarming dishes like hot pot in winter. Balance and harmony um, are also reflected in the balance in the many flavors that Japanese cuisine has to offer, uh, which is achieved by using different techniques and flavorings um, proportionally, such as uh, rice wine and rice vinegar, respectively. To add, there's also cuisine called omakase, which literally translates in English to I leave it up to you, and different Japanese restaurants adopt this cuisine where the customer leaves it up to the chef to choose and serve seasonal specialties which can be pers pers personalized according to what the customer wants, unlike kaiseki, where the menu is strictly predetermined by the chef. Despite how wonderful and delicious they may sound, will likely not be considered conventional Japanese food since, since it is so expensive and uses so many fresh, high-quality ingredients, so much that one may consider a fine dining. More conventional dishes that Japanese people would eat, however, still revolve around the same ideas of small portions and seasonality. Some of the most common types of dishes Japanese people would eat include noodle dishes, which can be hot or cold depending on the season, and uh, sea seafood, especially salmon or mackerel, vegetables that are either steamed, boiled, or sautéed, and an abundance of rice dishes like rice bowls, onigiri, or rice balls, curry, curry rice, sushi, or keiyu, which is a type of porridge sick people would since it is easily digestible. Additionally, something interesting is that for some specific conventional foods, different Japanese households have their own traditions or rituals for dining. And one example of this is the preparation of what's called miso shiru, which is a kind of miso soup that varies in recipe from household to household. Food, especially rice, is so important to the Japanese that there are also festivals dedicated to like rice planting festivals, which have come to be one of the most famous festivals in the Kansai region of Japan. Hundreds of these rice planting festivals are held at Shinto shrines all over Japan, and they can range from being small community gatherings to being huge public events with hundreds of performers. And within these events, people are able to show their gratitude for the many prosperous harvests they have already gotten and pray for future. Similarly, prosperous harvests and rain for their rice crops to flourish. That's a lot of take in. And that's a, that is certainly a lot of different cuisines and also foods, both cultural and conventional, that we have listened in on today. Um, thank you, John and also Kevin, for the input. And it's also really interesting to hear about all these Japanese cuisines and Something I really find myself to appreciate in this culture is the creative freedom that the chefs are given when 
preparing dishes like um kaiseki or omakase ki or sorry for my mispronunciation but omakase where they are allowed to choose ingredients they feel is the freshest and the best uh in the current season it may be while they are making their dishes it's also brilliant to see the way that the japanese chefs plate their food as well i mean just so delectable which really shows the care they put into preparing such dishes and it also makes them so eye-catching and so beautiful it's just almost as if you are looking at a piece of art or a piece of cuisine or something that can definitely suit to top tier cuisine anyone has ever seen in the world. Anyways, now that we've seen a brief overview on traditional Japanese foods and their origins, what kinds of these Japanese foods are most often eaten during the holidays, like those we discussed early, like Shogatsu or Dao's Day? Uh, Mr. Ray, um, I know you've also done some prior research to this. Can I ask you for your input on this question? Yeah, okay. So now regarding foods that are eaten during times of celebration and festivals, there is a similarly uh, wide variety of foods. And a favorite dish among the Japanese that is eaten on New Year's Day is Osechi Ryori, which is a special meal that consists of several different dishes like sweet rolled, uh, sweet rolled omelet, fished cake with salmon roe, candied sardines, daikon radish, and carrot salad and smashed chestnut and sweet potato paste, which are all prepared in advance to the New Year's celebration so that dishes like radish can also be pickled and sardines can be sugared. Also, for the Dolls Day in Japan that we've also discussed, dishes can vary based on the kind of regional cuisine present in the specific area in Japan, though sushi usually constitutes a main portion of the meal along with Hishimochi, which are these spring colored rice cakes whose colors are to represent fertility and good health. And similar to this, there's another dish called amagori zushi, which is, uh, which are these small rice balls wrapped in a thin omelet. And also the sushi that is served uh, is specifically referred to as uh, chirashi sushi, which it consists of a colorful array of sushi, usually in colors like yellow, green, white, and pink. And in addition, during what's called Anami or Cherry Blossom Festival, uh, where people admire the blossoming of cherry trees called Sakura uh, during springtime, people would also eat onahiri, uh, which is also commonly eaten on a daily basis, along with this be this kind of bean paste called miso and preserved cherry sweet called sakura mochi. And during such festivals, there are so many other foods that are eaten like bento meals and interestingly enough, KFC or Kentucky Fried Chicken during Christmas, adopted by Western tradition and a soba noodle soup dish called toshikoshi soba. Wow, thank you so much for the input, uh, Mr. Ray. And this food all appears to be really scrumptious uh if i had to so say by myself and again i like the amount of inspiration the japanese cuisine draw from nature and how aesthetically and just visually pleasing they all look so much so that i mean everyone can almost feast on the food with their eyes alone now Having covered the different traditional festivals and cuisines that the Japanese had to offer and moving away from these topics, what are the different forms of art, entertainment, or cultural media that the Japanese had to offer? So uh, Japanese culture has a diverse range of activities and entertainment forms um, to offer from its uh, rich heritage and traditions, uh, whether that be in you know the arts, the music, the cuisine, festivals, or other kinds, kinds of entertainment. Um, in specific to the arts, Japan has had a long history of traditional arts that can come in uh, many forms, including the visual arts, performing arts, and martial arts. Um, there are several different forms of traditional Japanese martial arts, such as judo, karate, aikido, kendo, and probably the most well-known being sumo, uh, which all emphasize values such as physical fitness, self-discipline, health, and self-defense. In the performing arts, um, there are also many different forms of uh, different kinds of theaters, 
Uh, the two notable being the Kabuki Theater, known for its references to historical events, legends, and folk tales, and its elaborate costumes, stylized makeup, exaggerated gest gestures, and melodramatic plots. There's also what's called the uh, Bunraku Puppet Theater, which involves the use of intricate puppets that are manipulated by puppeteers who you can visibly see on stage. And the genres they cover are expansive, including historical dramas, romantic tragedies, and supernatural tales, which all are accompanied about with narrators and the music from traditional instruments like the shamisen, koto, or uh, shakuachi. Then for the visual arts, uh, traditional forms include the tea ceremony, also known as the way of tea, which involves the ceremony preparation and serving of matcha, which is this powdered green tea emphasizing ideas of harmony, respect, and tranquility. And along with this is a flower, flower arranging called ikebana that involves the careful placement of flowers, branches, and leaves in, an, in a harmonious composition within a vase or container and woodblock printing called ukiyoe which includes intricate designs of wooden blocks. Um, in modern times, though, though these captivating illustrations um, called anime and manga have become much more popular um, to the Japanese over these traditional forms of visual arts, anime shows like Naruto or Dragon Ball Z have gained much popularity worldwide as well as their interesting stories, characters, and creative world building. Another interesting thing is that the Japanese, like the Koreans, also form large communities for gaming culture, especially with many thriving Japanese industries who develop video games, such as Nintendo and Sony, most famous for games like the Mario or Legend of Zelda series. It is without a doubt that Japanese culture, especially in the field of gaming and visual arts, has come to influence not only communities within its own com country um, and the US with Japanese American communities, communities, but also communities in many other countries spanning the world. Um, wow, thank you for the input, um, Kevin Delgado. But oh, um, <clears throat> looking at the time, it looks like this is all the time we have for today, folks. And this was a brief overview over Japanese culture and its three main parts being festivals, cuisines, and its arts and activities. And there is much more to explore about this vast culture that we recommend to you to look at at your own time, or even better yet, look at in person. Um, in your local Japanese communities or even in their home country, if you are able to. Anyways, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Sad Pie Enterprises. And we are your hosts, Tehun King, John Mason, Kevin Delgado, and Ray Chang. We hope you have a wonderful day, evening, or night, wherever you are. Thank you. <laughs>